Hello and welcome to DFS Coach Talk. I am Joe Sarvati, affectionately known as Coach, and I am here to go over today's NBA Summer League slate, which we have eight full games. Should be an outstanding day of NBA Summer League basketball. I wish I was there. I will be there next year with a bunch of our NBA fans of uh, Coach Talk. So very excited for that coming up next year and uh, really looking forward to it. So uh, let's uh, we're going to dive into this eight game slate. It's broken into th uh, two different slates, a three gamer that starts earlier at uh, 330 and then a five game main slate that starts at 6 p.m. Both of those are Eastern time. So two different slates, uh, all on DraftKings, and we'll talk a little bit about the pricing there as well. But let's just give a brief uh, discussion of the games, who to keep an eye out for, rookies, and then some of the uh, two- or three-year veterans uh, that scatter among some of these teams. What we've seen in the first two days thus far are really a little bit more dominance from the rookies, uh, a good, good uh, push from the second-year guys, a um, little bit more of a minimal role for the guys that are trying to find a team or hang on. But we'll see some of those three- and four-year experience guys, uh, again, scattered on some of these teams. So coming up with that perfect mix is certainly the key, and uh, that's what we're going to try to help you with today. But we'd love to have you join us at DFS Coach Talk. This is the perfect time of the year to join us. Uh, we have a multitude of different memberships that you can choose from. Just go to dfscoachtalk.com. You can pick as little as a three-day slate uh, for 10 bucks. And again, with any of our packages, you get everything that we have. Like today is just an absolute loaded day here at Coach Talk. We're providing lineups, uh, core builds in on DraftKings and full lineups on Yahoo and FanDuel for uh, all of the NBA action, all of the MLB action, and then we have MMA as, as well today. So uh, anytime you get a package with us, you get everything that we have. But we also are announcing a package of MLB second half. That starts today, July 9th, and it goes all the way through to October 1st. And it's only 110 bucks. It is a great deal. Tons and tons of lineups, uh, all kinds of action in all of our sports, and you get all of that all the way through. So, But if you're just uh, an NBA fanatic uh, like me and you're wanting to play the NBA Summer League, you can just uh, join for that. We have a, a package. It's only 26 bucks and goes all the way through the championship game on July 17th. Okay. On YouTube, give us that thumbs up right now. There it is. Uh, we really appreciate that. Hit the subscribe button. And also, if you will, uh, hit that alert so you know anytime any of our podcasts post. All right, the first game, 3.30 p.m. Eastern. It's the Toronto Raptors at the Philadelphia 76ers. As we turn to Toronto, they've got a mixture. Uh, they definitely have a few veterans in there. DJ Wilson, believe it or not, has five years experience in the league. I can't believe that. Uh, but he is on this roster. So certainly a guy that can dominate at times and we want to keep an eye on. Uh, Rodis, Rodians Kuruks, Mr. Kuruks, the guy we used to play all the time for the Nets when he was getting some uh, serious minutes a few years back. He's got three years experiences on this roster trying to make a team as well. If he gets the minutes, he could be dangerous. And same thing with Armani Brooks, who is looking to uh, catch on to a team. He's got two years experience. So those are the three guys that I would uh, focus on that have played. Uh, also, Justin Champagne, uh, he's got one year at Pittsburgh, and he got some minutes this past year. As far as the rookies, Ron Harper Jr., who is the son of Ron Harper that played with the Cavaliers and played with Michael Jordan in Chicago. His uh, son is a rookie from Rutgers. So we're going to get a look at him uh, in this Toronto on this Toronto squad. Uh, they also have a couple of other uh, decent looking rookies throughout here that uh, could get some time. 
uh, maybe a Jalen Sims from UNC Wilmington uh, being one. And then certainly um, Christian Vital, I think, is worth a look from Connecticut. He's a, a 6'2 guard uh, that can score the ball. So that's what we've got uh, real quickly for um, Toronto. So now we're going to jump to the Philadelphia side. And we have to go one by one here because it is it is tougher finding all the information and coverage for the Summer League. There's no doubt, but I love it. All right. For the Philadelphia side, we've got um, Julian Champ Champagne, also uh, same name, but it is He's from St. John's, a rookie. They're expecting a lot from him, 6'8", uh, and definitely a guy that uh, uh, you want to watch for, for this roster. Um, Isaiah Joe, who played nice minutes at guard, he could be their floor leader. He's got two years' experience, so you want to look at him. A couple other vets here, Charlie Brown Jr., also got minutes, three years' experience. Cassius Winston, I think he's got a lot of ability, a kid out of Michigan State. He's trying to hook on uh, another guy. And then, of course, uh, Paul Reed, who really played some important minutes uh, for the Sixers this year. He's also on the roster. So if they play those experienced guys, they are going to be a tough team to beat. A couple other guys uh, of note here, Jaden Springer from Tennessee, his second year. He definitely can play. Uh, they have a nice rookie out of Indiana, Justin Smith, somebody to keep uh, an eye on. And then uh, a couple other second-year players. And that seems to be the theme for the teams that are looking to win this thing is, is they've got a lot of good second-year players. And here's two, uh, the last two I'll mention uh, from Philly, and that's Charles Bassey, the 6'11 big fella out of Western Kentucky, and Grant uh, Riller. He's a nice player out of College of Charleston. Little small guard, six feet, but also a really nice ball player. So Philly's got a very competitive lineup and uh, definitely some guys with some experience. So uh, keep an eye on Philadelphia. The second game on that early three-game slate is the Orlando Magic and the Sacramento Kings. Uh, for Orlando, we've got uh, some really great rookies here. Two of them. We talked about them. They've got a game under their belt, and that's, of course, the number one pick overall, uh, uh, Paolo Bonchero. And man, did he look good. I have to say, I thought that uh, that uh, Jabari Smith could hang with him, and he couldn't. Uh, Bonchero's ready for the NBA. I think uh, Jabari's going to be terrific, but he might need a little seasoning where Bonchero looks like he's ready right now. I mean, he reminded me a lot of uh, Jason Tatum. I think he's going to be uh, a stud, and he seems to be taking charge of this team and, and a very, very good play today. His uh, Caleb Houston, his uh, rookie running mate from Michigan, another fantastic player. And he, the, both of those guys are 19 years old too. So what a future for the Orlando Magic with two fantastic picks. And then they've got uh, some veterans that really played a, an important role in the first game. And we were on R.J. Hampton. He looked good. Admiral Schofield started. He looked pretty solid as well. And then Devin Canaday, another guy that uh, you want to keep an eye on. Um, after that, they, they did a lot of rotation. But those are the main guys uh, that I would focus on uh, from Orlando. Um, on the other side of the ball, uh, let's see here for the Sacramento Kings. It's our first look at the Kings uh, in this summer league. Rookie, rookie, rookie. They've got a bunch of them. Three of key ones that they have, especially number one, Keegan Murray. Uh, he was a guy they're really counting on out of Iowa. Another guy with a little experience. He's 21 and he could come in and dominate. There's no doubt. Uh Frankie Ferrari, a rookie from San Francisco, and then DJ Stewart, uh, one of those uh, rookies from Duke uh, that makes up a big group of solid players. Now, those guys could play a big role. Sacramento chose to go super, super rookie-ish here. They only have two guys on the entire, uh, well, three guys on the entire roster that have any experience in the NBA, and it's only one year, and that's Sean McDermott. Uh, the guard out of Butler, so he could get some some nice minutes. 
Um, Aid Murky out of uh, Denver uh, with one year experience, and uh, Nemeas Queta out of Utah State. Other than that, it's all rookie. So Murray, Ferrari, Stewart, you may see some TJ Starks, Matt Coleman, uh, Elijah Brown out of Oregon, as well as another guy. So Sacramento's probably going to take their lumps, but some of these guys are going to be really good and get some good stats. I'm a big Keegan Murray guy today, uh, without question. All right, we go on to the third game of the morning slate. That's Boston, or the afternoon slate, Boston and Miami. So we're going to switch to Boston. And again, with this group, uh, you know, we're expecting a lot of, uh, you know, rotation here. We've got Sam Hauser, second year out of Virginia. Um, of course, A.J. Reeves, rookie out of Providence. J.D. Davidson, uh, this kid can play. Uh, he's a rookie out of Alabama. He's only 19, though, so he's a baby. Uh, Kevin Yelly's going to get minutes, no doubt. Two years experience from Florida State. He's a guy that you can count on for some minutes and probably some scoring. Uh, Robert Franks, uh, he's got a, a cup of coffee in uh, the NBA last year. Second year out of Washington State. I think he'll play a role. Uh, on this team, but really look at, uh, uh, other than Kevin Yelly, uh, look at Sam Hauser, J.D. Davidson uh, to play a, a pretty good role, and A.J. Reeves. Okay, uh, playing against Boston is Miami. Um, Miami Heat, uh, interesting roster here as well. A couple of, just a couple of guys with some good experience. Other than that, you're going to have, again, a, a Good rookie group here. Mike Mulder, three years uh, experience out of Kentucky, should be the leader for this squad going in. He's got the most experience. He can play. Guy that I really like too, Haywood Highsmith. When he got a few minutes last year, uh, he could play for Miami. He was forced into action when they were injured and shorthanded. And I'll tell you what, Highsmith can play. And uh, he's going to be a guy that's going to make a lot of my rosters. Then you've got the guy everybody calls uh, the MVP, Nikola Jovic, not Jokic, but he's going to be a key guy, obviously, on this squad. They took him high, and they took him the first round, 6'11", big fella, and looks smooth. Uh, reminds me a little bit of Sabonis kind of guy. So it'll be fun to watch him and uh, see how he does. Uh, I think he'll do uh, very well. And then uh, the, the big guy. Omer Yertsaven. Yertsaven got a lot of minutes last year. He started a bunch of games when uh, Bam was out. Uh, you got to expect him when he's in there to completely dominate. So really excited uh, to see how this group will mix. And I think I'll have a decent amount of Miami Heat uh, exposure, no doubt about it. All right, let's go to that main slate. We've got uh, five really solid games. Uh, the first one is the Detroit Pistons and the Washington Wizards. So we're going to go to Detroit first, take a look at them, and uh, talk about a team just full of young talent. We got to see them a little bit before, and I'll tell you what, uh, no kidding, man. This Jalen Duran kid, the big fella from Memphis, he's only 18 years old, and he, he look, reminds me so much of Sean Kemp. Uh, Doris Burke said it on the on watching the uh, calling the game. He's just an incredible dunker with a huge body. He's 250, but he's not fat. He's a flyer. Um, so boy, is he fun to watch? Um, you know, we'll see if we get any Kate Cunningham or not. Uh, you know, that's we'll follow that throughout the day. But Killian Hayes, Braxton Key were key important guys. Uh, we, of course, we saw the point guard Jaden Ivey. He was the key. He hooked up with Duran early on and expect a lot out of Jaden Ivey, uh, Ivy, even more so than he did in the first game. Uh, he is certainly a, a nice, nice player in this league and should make a, an awesome backcourt with Cade Cunningham. So we'll follow who's in and out. But the reason why Detroit's one of my picks to win this is they also have, ready for this, Isaiah Stewart and Sadiq Bey on this squad. And 
if those guys play, they can dominate in a short amount of time. So we got to keep a close eye on them. And even Saban Lee, uh, his third year already out of Vanderbilt, he could get some time in there. Uh, the Bayheim brothers, Buddy and Jimmy, I'm not going to go there. Not, I don't think they're going to quite make the team. Hopefully they get some G League experience. But Detroit is loaded and uh, making a decision where to spend that salary with them is definitely uh, a very tough call because they have some talent and they have some experience. All right, the Washington Wizards. Um, interesting squad here. Davion Mintz, the rookie out of Kentucky, is going to be a key guy. He's 6'3", and he's got a lot of experience. He's 24 years old. He understands the game. He definitely can play. They have a couple of guys with some experience. Uh, Devon Dotson, uh, third year. This will be his third year out of Kansas. He'll get some time, as well as Vernon Carey. Uh, he's got two years experience out of Duke. Big guy. I think you'll see him get some action uh, and, and really be able to dominate uh, the inside game. Uh, they picked uh, up rookie Isaiah Todd from the G League Ignite. I want to see what he's got to bring to the table. Uh, he could be very good. Uh, a couple other guys I think uh, may have an impact. Number one being Johnny Davis, the rookie out of Wisconsin. This kid can play. He was a high pick, a lot expected of him. And he's going to be uh, really the number one guy from this team uh, that I'm looking at. Expect Quentin Jackson, uh, another pick they took out of Texas A&M. Uh, to get some minutes as well. But uh, I think this could be the Johnny Davis uh, coming out party, if you will. Uh, so we'll follow him very closely. All right, game two. It's a 7.30 game. It's the Atlanta Hawks and the Utah Jazz. Um, uh, for the Atlanta Hawks, we've got, of course, uh, Sharif Cooper. Two years, uh, one year experience out of Auburn. I think uh, as a guard, he could run the show a lot. I uh, love A.J. Griffin out of Duke. I love this, this kid's potential. Another 18-year-old, uh, just a baby, but uh, he's got some great uh, potential here. Uh, Joel Ayayi from Gonzaga, he's got one year under his belt. He'll see some minutes uh, in here without question. Uh, looking forward to watching Tyrese Martin, the rookie out of Connecticut. I think he's got uh, potential to make the league and do well. A uh, couple of guys they have uh, with experience that'll get some minutes. Marcus George's Hunt, he's got two years from Georgia Tech, 6'6", 220 uh, wing, nice player. Uh, I think he'll get some minutes, as well as Chandler Hutchinson, who's trying to uh, get on to a team, and Chris Clemens, who's trying to hang. He can score in bunches. Two years out of Campbell, we've seen him uh, drop a bunch of points. Uh, in the summer league before, I believe it was for the uh, Rockets. So uh, some good choices there. Don't forget uh, the last guy, and I think a guy that may be their top scorer in some of these games, and that's Sean Day Brown Jr. It's his second year out of Michigan. He's a guard that can score the ball. And, you know, again, these guys are fighting for their lives, trying to make a team. So uh, there is no time better than the present for these guys to get it done. All right. We're going to switch gears to the Utah Jazz now. Um, Utah Jazz, let's see here. They obviously played some uh, some earlier in uh, the other summer league that uh, was before this, um, this one in Vegas. So there they are. Okay. So we know uh, what to expect here. We, we really do. They have a very young team. Uh, that now they're trying to just reshuffle the deck and basically start all over. I like a lot of guys here, really. I mean, Justin Robinson has played three years in the league from Virginia Tech. Jared Butler, who we know uh, got some time for them last year uh, out of Baylor. He's a really nice ball player. I think you'll expect him in there. Kofi Cockburn, the seven-foot center from Illinois, is their rookie uh, top pick. I think you'll see him get some minutes. minutes. And then uh, Barisa Simonic uh, from Serbia, their rookie that they took, he's 6'11", uh, and he's got some experience. So both of those big guys uh, could get some minutes. 
Uh, and then Johnny Juzang from uh, UCLA, another rookie. So they they had all kinds of young picks here that they're going to try to get some minutes. Uh, I like DJ Funderburg too. I remember watching his dad play uh, at NC State. That's I know I can't believe it. And so now he's a rookie in the league trying to make a team. Um, and James a Palmer Jr. from Nebraska, a guy that flew under the radar that also could do well. Uh, interesting, though, they have Bruno Caboclo, seven years experience in the NBA, uh, probably one of the oldest guys. He's only 26 and with seven years experience. But, uh, you know, we'll see if he's going to get some decent run. And then, of course, Taco Fall, big number 99. He's trying to make a squad. Uh, and he's something, man. I saw him as rookie year there in, in Vegas in the summer league for the Celtics. And he is the most massive individual I have seen. I mean, he's, it's amazing how big he is. But we'll see if he gets minutes uh, also. All right, we have, let's see, how many games remaining? We've got uh, three games left. It's an 8, a 9, 30, and a 10. Just real briefly here, I want to mention uh, we would love to have you join us. Go to dfscoachtalk.com. You can choose our three-day package for 10 bucks, our NBA Summer League package, which takes you all the way through July 17th for 26 bucks, or the one that we just announced today the, for the first time on this podcast. If you want the second half MLB, it's only 110 bucks, and you get it from today all the way until October 1st. I know it. And with that, you get everything we have. You get our basketball, you get our football, baseball, MMA, uh, NASCAR, you name it. We got it. So uh, we would absolutely love to have you join us for that. Uh, if you're watching right now on YouTube, quick thumbs up. That's super important to us. Hit that subscribe button and then also hit the little alert in the corner so you know any of our podcast posts. If you want to keep up with us and follow this news, because with the NBA Summer League, it's constantly changing, check us out on Twitter. We're at DFS Coach Talk. If you want to reach me directly, you can go to at Joe Sarvati. That's J-O-E-S-A-R-V-A-D-I. All right, three games to go. The Oklahoma City Thunder and the Houston Rockets are next. Oklahoma City Thunder uh, the big talk and the guy that it seems like is going to be one of these sweetheart uh, DFS guys, and that's Chet Holmgren, seven foot one rookie out of Gonzaga, and he put up like six blocks, bunch of rebounds, bunch of points, and he only played twenty some minutes. So if he gets good run, uh, Chet could be the number one guy today. There's no question about it. He looks awesome. And how about his running mate, Josh Giddy? How about a triple-double in his last summer league game here in Utah? So, And he's only 19 years old. I'll tell you, Oklahoma City, it's got to have, you know, it's been frustrating, I'm sure, to be a fan there recently. But, man, what a future they have with all these young guys. So those two guys could be two of the higher-owned guys, and they deserve it. But there's other guys on this team. Jalen Williams, the rookie from Arkansas, a really nice ball player. Uh, Lindy Waters the third looked like he had some game when he got minutes last year. It's his uh, set will be his second year out of Oklahoma State. Then they they took a rookie, a 19 year old 6'10 big fella uh, from New Zealand, uh, uh, Osman Dien, uh, Jeng, and D I E N G, just like the other uh, some of the other big guys, and he's uh, got some potential. And then how about Jaden Shackelford, uh, rookie out of Alabama? Uh, Fantastic. But here's the, the key and why I think Oklahoma City very well may win this thing. They have Poku, who we know started a bunch of games for them the last two years. He's on the team. We have Aaron Wiggins, who led them in scoring for some of the games that he played. We have Trey Mann that we put in there a bunch for, for him, uh, for Oklahoma City last year. Uh, Eugene Omarui, who played from Oregon, Oregon. Vit Krejci, who was the guy that when they signed actually had some big games. And then they have another rookie, Gabe Brown, out of Michigan State. And how about JRE? Would you believe that? Jeremiah Robinson Earl also on this team. So it's basically the majority of their team, uh, except a few key guys. But wow, they are deep. But here's my concern. 
how do you trust paying the, the salaries with these guys when they have about 11 guys that I count that really could get minutes and do well? And uh, definitely the most loaded, deepest, best team as far as uh, potential and experience with one, two-year guys. Uh, man, are they going to be tough to beat? And it's going to be tough from a DFS perspective determining where to go. I mean, start with Gideon Holmgren, but a bunch of these other guys that are going to fly under the radar have the potential to just smash it. So Oklahoma City, if you're going to stack, that's where to stack, in my opinion, no doubt. Houston Rockets talk about another team uh, that's uh, really good. I mean, we saw it. We saw Jamari, Jabari Smith. Did not do well, though. I think he had three points, real points. He is a talent. He's going to be great. I just don't think he's there yet. And so I flipped my opinion. And I know it's only one game. Say, Coach, how can you do that? Well, here's the deal. I, if I was building a team long term, I do think Jabari Smith may be the best player out of this entire draft. I do think once he develops, gets a little muscle, he's got at 6'10". Not that he is going to be as good. Nobody's as good as Kevin Durant, but he's got that kind of body where he can shoot it, take it to the hoop, defend. Uh, he's a fine defender, too. So uh, I do think he's going to be great. But right this second, I think Banchero, Holmgren are more ready. So Jabari's expensive. He's good, but not probably going to go there, especially since he has a lot of good guys with him. Uh Tari Eason, man, he looked uh, like he was ready to go. Uh, he's 21, and that's a big difference, you know, from 19. That couple of years of growth and experience helps. Uh, I think Eason's a nice play. Josh Christopher, we know, is a terrific ball player. I think you can expect him to lead this team in scoring. And then the rookie, Ty Ty uh, Washington. I love it, Ty Ty. He's out of Kentucky and uh, real good floor leader. Uh, he'll definitely uh, contribute. Tell you who else looked good uh, to me is Anthony Lamb. He's got two years under his belt out of Vermont, but he looked like a nice ball player uh, that would be a good part of what they're doing. So I love this. will probably be the game I have the most rostered, uh, this uh, Oklahoma City-Houston game. I think you have the most standout guys available uh, in that one. Okay, we've got two more games, a 930 game, the L.A. Clippers and the Memphis Grizzlies. So let's go to the LA Clippers and see what they are putting out there for the summer league. All right, we've got some experienced guys here, and we'll mention them first. Jay Scrub, who's not a scrub. He's a nice ball player. Two years uh, under his belt, he's definitely a guy you want to look at. Same thing with Brandon Boston. He got some minutes. Xavier Moon can play. Uh, and then they've got some nice rookies. Uh, Musa Diabate, I really like him out of Michigan, 6'11", big kid, uh, 210 pounds. Jason Preston, rookie out of Ohio, another a guy that uh, sort of went under the radar that can play. Um, and then a couple other players with some experience, Reggie Perry, uh, he has proved that he can play. He's trying to hook on to a team. I think he's got the potential of uh, having a very nice uh, summer league. And then Jarrell uh, Brantley. Uh, he's got three years under his belt out of Charleston. So uh, not as strong of a team here, but I think with Diabate and Preston as the rookies and Boston and Scrub especially uh, leading the way as the guys with a few years under their belt, uh, they can be uh, very competitive. Okay, they'll be taking on, the Clippers are taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, Memphis... Uh, also has some guys that uh, are going to be exciting to watch here. And uh, we'll start with a couple of their rookies. Kennedy Chandler uh, out of Tennessee, six-foot guard, but, man, is he good. He, he can really play. I think he'll be – you'll enjoy watching him. As uh, Romeo uh, uh, Weems, also rookie out of DePaul, a lot of expected from him, 6'7", 210, nice ball player. But then they've got a, a couple of guys that, that uh, played a role last year that are really <laughs> outstanding. And if they get the minutes, could dominate. Obviously, Xavier Tillman, uh, he's got two years under his belt for Michigan State and started games for Memphis last year. So he's a guy that really could be good. 
One of my favorite rookies, I mentioned him the other day, uh, is Jake LaRavia from Wake Forest. He's 20 years old, but just I love the way this guy plays. He can shoot it. He's got good size at 6'7", 235, but he's got really good feet. He can defend. He can play away from the basket. He finishes. Uh, one of my uh, real under-the-radar guys in this draft that I think is going to help the Grizzlies and can get rotational minutes in year one. Um, the other guys that uh, played last year that that are uh, will have an impact, of course, Zaire Williams. He was their, their guy out of Stanford last year that also got uh, big minutes this year. Aldama, uh, second-year player, uh, he got a, a cup of coffee last year as well. And then the last two guys, Dakota uh, Mathias trying to make the team, and Tremont Waters. Uh, both guys played and are trying to hook on here uh, with the Grizz. So Memphis is, is definitely competitive. Uh, I think they're going to be fun to watch. Uh, that you know mixture of guys that have some experience uh, and guys that uh, are just first time out on the floor as a rookie. All right, last game, late night sweat game. We can call it that for NBA Summer League. It's a 10 o'clock game. It's the New Orleans Pelicans and Portland Trailblazers. So let's take a look at the Pels first. A um, couple of uh, fun players to watch here that are going to be interesting. Uh, Darion Seaborn, the 6'7 rookie out of NC State. Uh, they really think he can be a nice ball player and be a rotational uh, player on this team. But they have some guys with some experience uh, that could dominate. Jose Alvarado, obviously, we all know him, the steel expert. He got big minutes and important minutes in the playoffs even. It's his second year out of Georgia Tech. Najee Marshall, who there were times where he looked absolutely awesome uh, the last couple of years. Uh, so he's a guy that we want to keep uh, an eye on. Trey Murphy the third. I'll tell you what, that guy is so darn good. He is. He was a great pick for them last year in the draft from Virginia. I love him. I think he's going to be a player, and I think he could be awesome in this summer league uh, throughout. Um, the the last guy I'll mention with some experience is Devidius Cer, uh, Servetus. There you go. He we saw him uh, last couple of years. It's S I S I R V Y D I S. He's uh, 6'8 forward, uh, foreign player, but he definitely could get some minutes and could contribute to this team. But I think the, the guys that I mentioned are going to be the key guys uh, that will step up, and they'll be a competitive squad as well with that experience. All right, the last team uh, for this slate is the Portland Trailblazers. Uh, we saw Dame there watching the Trailblazers the other day. And, you know, it was really the guys we expected to show up. Um, of course, uh, Shaden Sharp got a ton of attention out of Kentucky. Uh, the rookie, obviously, a uh, big future here with the uh, club. Uh, he definitely has a very nice game. Uh, he was really highly thought of. I think he'll be terrific. And then some experienced guys that they have. Uh, Traden Watford, Greg Brown, Keon Johnson, and Brandon Williams. All second-year guys with D.D. Luzada, George King, Luke Garza, Luca Garza. Those guys all can play. Josh Gray's got two years under his belt, so he'll get minutes. So they have a great group of youngsters, a lot of them second-year guys. But really, Jabari Walker from Colorado and Shaden Sharp from Kentucky are the two uh, rookies that I'm most interested in seeing here uh, in, in this uh, summer league. I think they can be very, very, uh, you know, contributors, big contributors. So, all right, my friends, uh, that is it. Uh, I'm excited to watch. I'm trying to watch all the basketball games. So I'm catching at least some of every game and then trying to balance a little baseball in there makes it pretty interesting. So, uh, I love this time of year, these next nine days now, I think left for the NBA summer league. And uh, with baseball going on, it is a blast. Um, so can't wait uh, to see how we do today. But uh, if you want to join us again, and uh, go to dfscoachtalk.com. If you enjoyed this, you enjoyed the way that I'm putting 
this information out for the summer league. Give me a quick comment here. I love feedback, good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, if you can give us a, a thumbs up, we'd appreciate it. If not, that's okay too. And just give, uh, ask any question, give a little feedback, and I will definitely keep an eye on this uh, on YouTube to make sure I answer all of those questions. So thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I'll be back every day during the Summer League with a preview of the games. We have two great slates on DraftKings, a three and a five gamer. So let's uh, go after both of them. So thanks for joining. Uh, also catch our MLB podcast. It'll be coming out in about the next hour. Uh, and that will uh, be Crash and I uh, tackling those slates. So thanks again. Have a fantastic Saturday. And also, as always, we'll be back again tomorrow when we look to crush it in NBA Summer League, DFS, and prize picks.